Last time on Edgeworth Investigations. But he has like a billion girls swarming him. You just, there's one and you just let it go. I shouldn't say it like it's an object, but you let it go. <laughs> hey guys, right in here and welcome back to Edgeworth Investigations. So we've completed two episodes out of five, which have gone by relatively quickly, but it probably just gets longer and longer as you go on until the fifth one I imagine will drag on forever, which may or may not be a bad thing. But anyways, we're about to get to the kidnap turnabout. Now, what one of you guys told me is that there's a lot of cameo characters, like characters that show up in the background but don't particularly do anything. Um, like the creepy guy from the last episode. So, there's going to be quite a few of those, and I'll try to look out for them the best I can. Once again, I did have the revelation that I didn't finish the end of 3. Um, what is that? That's Justice for All. I didn't finish the end of Justice for All, so... I didn't, never got that chance. So, I might not recognize some characters that I might have to. But anyways, let's go. I'm still very curious as to who the main villains are, or not really the villains, but our main opponents in whatever way. I'm not exactly sure what that would be. Don't worry, Mr. Edgeworth. I've been following your every movement with my binoculars. Good to hear. Now make sure you don't lose sight of me. I'm counting on you for backup. Sir, you are really, really tight. God damn it, you have them backwards again, don't you? Who would have thought that upon my return, I'd be thrust into a kidnapping case? And then I would be the one who would have to make the ransom drop off. You know, we haven't had a kidnapping since the second game. Unless in 3 there was a kidnapping and I forgot about it. Or didn't know it, so. <laughs> Who knows, I might have to go back and play 3 on the channel eventually. <clears throat> Let's see, I checked that money is all there, safe inside this suitcase. Now all I have to do is- <laughs> I love how he's using the ugly suitcase, like, Oh my god, I'm so glad I can finally get rid of this thing. Now all I have to do is wait for further instructions from the kidnapper. Which I'm expecting to be transferred to my cellular phone. I wonder who else is around. This is the meeting place after all, I think. <laughs> Welcome to Gatewater Land! Huh? Oh, thank you. And a big hello to you. I'm the Proto Badger. Nice to meet you. Oh, I, I can tell I'm just going to have a blast here. Excuse me, but were you think perhaps that you're taking a picture with me? A picture of you? Sorry, but I'm not interested. Oh, that's too bad. Well, have a good day. Yes, and you die in a fire. Hello? Who are you? You're not Ernest Amano. It sounds like the kidnapper is using some sort of voice alternate alteration device. I'm his representative, M Miles Edgeworth. Are you a cop? No, I'm... a prosecutor. <laughs> this is going over so smoothly. I know what you're wondering, and yes, I have brought the ransom money with me. Cash, cash, money. I see. In that case, bring the money with you to the stadium. So this person intends to see if I'm being followed, huh? Please, Detective Gumshoe, I really need you to come through for me this one time. Well then, that was, um... That was... Nothing really happened. Oh, drums! I remember when I used to play the drums. No, not really. Edgeworth speaking. Next, come to the haunted house. And just how long do you intend me to have... Er, how long do you intend to have me wander around for? That's for me to decide. You don't have much of a choice here, my friend. I suppose not. Can I at least stop to get a pretzel? No. Well then, no pretzels for Edgeworth. I've arrived. Go inside. <laughs> Spooky. Oh, 
I love how unfazed Edgeworth is by the fact that that suitcase was a different color in the mirror. Hm. What a dismal place. That's it. Go through those doors. That dead thing over there is like a real dead person, isn't it? <laughs> Am I being watched from somewhere? It's just one of those spooky eyes you see in paintings and uh, cartoons. You see them move. Ah, uh, finally! A meal fitting for Edgeworth. Now leave the money and go. Now. Uh. I was hoping for an exchange, but maybe I should do as they say for now and not push it. What? Hello? I couldn't catch even a glimpse of the kidnapper. Perhaps I should keep an eye on this haunted house until police backup arrives. Well? Well, what about the thing? Kidnappings are a tro. I feel something kind of blue close to me. Something blue and holding a sword. It's probably nothing. Ah! It was a trap. March 13th, 11.23 a.m. That guy betrayed. No, can't be. Then the deal... Who is that? And what are they talking about? Split... Police. All right. In front of meet up. I can't move my body. <laughs> he seems to have used some paralysis on me. No, seriously, what's going on? Why does that blue badger head have like a creepy mustache? I don't like that mustache combo thing. Where am I? How long was I out? It wasn't raining like it is now when I made the drop-off. For a second it looked like his mouth was gagged, but that's just because his cravat's so big that when he puts his head down it makes it look like he's wearing, um, like a bandana. Or I guess like a bandit-style bandana. This is supposed to be a simple affair. And so why have I been taken hostage as well? You can only assume Detective Gumchu lost sight of me at some point. The only reason I agreed to be the drop-off man was because of that phone call. It was, uh, it was from Mr. Ernst Amano. His ears are quite large. The director of the most powerful Zaibatsu, the Amano group. Aside from that, what is a Zaibatsu anyway? I'm, I'm sure someone in the comment section will say. Aside from that, I also owe him a great debt of gratitude. Great debt of gratitude. Jeez. <laughs> His only son, Lance, has been kidnapped. I know that Lance is already in his 20s, but I guess some things you never grow out of. Like getting kidnapped! <laughs> I can't sit around waiting for someone to come help me. I must escape somehow. <laughs> yes, I shall yell obscenities until someone comes to save me. Haha, <laughs> was that you making that funny sound? Who's there? And how dare you laugh at a gentleman's plight? Huh? I have a feeling this is Edgeworth's assistant. I've heard so much about this girl. I don't even know her name, but I've just heard so much about her, and she's the one I used the theme for the outro, at least a remix of, so... That's pretty cool. Who are you? Are you one of the kidnappers? A kidnapper? Me, no way. I'm not into such petty crimes. Nope, after something much bigger. Hmm... I don't like young women. Alright, I must be worn out from today's ordeal. Focus, Miles. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Sorry about that. Ahem. Even in the depths of night, when no other bird dares to take flight, one alone soars to shine, <laughs> to shine the light of righteousness on the world's blight. And that one is me, for I am the great thief, Yatagrasu. A great thief. And did she really just claim to be Yantagrasu? Oh yeah, but my real name is Kay Farday. You can call me Kay. Kay. Good? Then that's glad that's settled. 
Edgeworth's just like, okay, I'm gonna go home and drink myself to sleep, okay? Not quite. I have a mountain of questions for you. But first, if you'd be so kind as to remove these ropes. Hmm, I wonder. Should I remove them? I was actually having a lot of fun watching you make those silly faces. <laughs> hey, there's no need to get all mad and ice glary on me, you know? This rope goes through here, and there you go. What a relief. I owe you my thanks. Uh, that's okay. You can pay me back in full later. Now then, what question should I start with? Unfortunately, I can already tell nothing is going to be easy with this cheeky girl. <laughs> oh my god, his hand is gigantic. It's like the size of her head. You call yourself a great thief, yet you are... Yet you really... Yet are you a really thief at... Bleh, are you really a thief at all? Oh my goodness, I am sorry, guys. You doubt me. I gay, you think that a young lady like me couldn't possibly be such a big-time thief, right? That's not the part I have a tough time believing. I've seen some pretty weird shit. I'm a real, genuine Yatakarasu, you know. Yep, I'm a pure-blooded great thief. And it's a little something I inherited from my predecessor. In that case, you wouldn't mind if I arrested you then, right? <laughs> what? Of course I'd mind, I haven't stolen anything yet. Seriously, I don't know how you can say such a horrible thing to your savior. That's true, technically she hasn't stolen anything in front of me, yet. I'll catch her. When you say you're the Yantagarasu, do you mean you are THE Yantagarasu? Yep. The most righteous of the righteous. The legendary great the- Okay, I'm feeling you're gonna say this shit a lot and it's gonna get old real quick. But the title was only recently succeeded to me. So I've had a chance to steal anything yet as the second Yantagarasu. I was not aware that thieves could pass down their titles like that. But don't worry, I've got some big plans in the works. Big plans, huh? They wouldn't happen to lead to a big arrest, would they? I knew it. There's just no reasoning with a prosecutor. I'm not the problem here. I'll have you know that the Yantagarasu has no interest in stealing petty trinkets. There's one thing, and one thing only I want to steal. Well, one thing. And what would that be? Your wallet. Uh, but no, no that other things too. That's going to have to wait until we find our way out of here. Well, at least there's one thing we agree on. I'm sure I'll have plenty of time later to learn more about you. No, you won't. After this mission, I'll disappear forever. <laughs> that would suck if there was like a like a recruitment for an assistant character, and you could just fail the game like that. So you never told me what your name is, Mr. Prosecutor. Uh, I guess not. I'm THE Miles Edgeworth. Aha, now I remember. How can you remember something I just told you? But she sure is cheery. Alright then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's get out of here. <laughs> um, are, are you done humping the door? Can you open it now? I am doing my best, don't worry. Uh, this is secret thief thing, you don't understand. Yeah, shit. It would seem that we are locked in from the other side. What? No way! I don't hear you, Lala! <laughs> okay, you do remember where you came from, right? It looks like that might be our only way out of this room. Whoops, slight miscalculation. That's a good height to make an entrance from, but I can't jump that high to make an exit. Wow, it's almost like we are surrounded in a room with objects that you could stand on and jump off of. I suppose we have no choice but to look around and see if we can't find another way out. Begin investigation. Isolation room. Yes, you continue um, sexually assaulting the door. I will investigate things. With my power of foresight. Hey, something inside that bottom right box. Oh, I think it's a pink badger costume. Pink badger. You don't keep up with what's going on in the world, do you? In that case, you'd better study up on the whole badger clan with this. Oh god, what is this? What is this thing? Exactly what I have to say, Edgeworth. 
Think of it as a Bible of all the things you'll ever need to know about the clan. Well, uh, whatever. I suppose I can keep it as a reference guide or something. <laughs> Blue B Badger Bible Dad <laughs> jotted down in my organizer. I suppose this means that this is where they keep all the costumes. It certainly looks that way. It's like the Badger family's home. There are eight boxes, but seven of them are empty. Which means seven of the costumes are in use right now. That's under the direct assumption that there's only one costume per box, but... Hey, let's just go with it. But aren't these badgers the mascots of the police force? Well, I heard that the police had a hand in sponsoring this theme park. Probably just because the gate where your gay water group wait. Oh, that's right. Isn't the Gatewater the people who own that hotel in the second game? Wasn't it the Gatewater Hotel? I don't remember. The Gatewater group owes the police from all those cases they solved. Quote unquote they. Quote unquote Phoenix Wright. Don't you dare say his name in my presence. They have all the power of the state, and they use it to make a theme park. It's not just any theme park. They have a handcuff-shaped, double-looping double looping roller coaster. That's quite enough. I have enough experience with on-sexual positions. I'm feeling woozy from just the thought of such a thing. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. I don't know. I don't actually see anything suspicious. I suppose this is the pink badger. But since it has the same design, it doesn't it seem forced to call this one a female? You think so? I mean, just look at how long her eyelashes are. That's the only difference. And the fact that she's pink. <laughs> yes, and? And her lips are red. See, lipstick. What, she has nothing to say about the giant pink ribbon, or is that too obvious? <laughs> oh, do I have to examine every single box? Suppose this is the pink badger. But since it has the same design, it doesn't seem forced to... Oh, we already went through this. Blah, 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 blah. This is that blue badger I met at the main gate. Excuse me, but his name is Proto Badger, not Blue Badger. He's based off the very first design created by the local police chief. You know when you compare the two, the blue badger looks a bit cuter. I suppose he's continued to redesign him. Yeah, I see why. The chief managed to make him cuter and cuter. Even humanity has come a long way when you think about how much we've evolved. Are we comparing the blue badger to humans now? So this is the blue badger's rival. The bad badger, huh? Oh god, I hate the naming conventions of these. Do you feel some sort of reverence towards the badger, Kay? Ha! I can't believe you'd be so stereotypical when it comes to thieves. Surely you must also think there are much cooler. The, there are much cooler and cuter ones out there, right? That's it, I've decided that thieves and thievery need an image makeover. Good luck with that one. <laughs> Look, it's a blue badger. I did these in like backwards order, but who cares, right? I got the thing done. That's what that's the most important part. I suppose even this thing can be popular with women. I can't stand him! But what, what in the... Why is she suddenly beating the blue badger's image up? <laughs> He's got the word badge right in his name. How bad is that for a girl like me? <laughs> and to think he's out there wandering around in this park. <laughs> I better be careful or he's going to arrest me by the power of his name alone. <laughs> I somehow doubt that the blue badger has the power to arrest anyone. Okay, well I have stared at this for long enough. Rest of the room go. Maybe we can use this paint to help us escape. And what exactly do you have in mind? That is like Edgeworth's number one sentence, is what exactly do you have in mind? I swear, he says that at least once per case. Well, we really could paint help in really giant letters. And who, pray tell, would see these giant letters? We're inside a building. Okay, then how about we light the paint on fire and send out colored smoke signals? Anyone who saw it would think some crazy arsonist was about and call the cops. Actually, it may not be such a great idea for me, seeing as how I'm a thief and all. <laughs> Let's try to find something other than paint to use, shall we? What is this? It's a phone? Hmm, isn't this my phone? 
Looks like it made it through the ordeal intact. There's only a way for us to contact someone on the outside. Ah, uh, but we do have a way right here. Ah, there's a cell phone this whole time? If I'm right, Detective Gumshoe should have contacted the present for backup by now. If I'm right- oh yeah, we already said that. I like the way she, like, hu like over-emotes every single thing. Mr. Edgeworth, sir, are you okay? I was so worried, sir. I'm fine, I was knocked unconscious for a spell by the kidnapper, that's all. Sorry, sir, I'm such a failure. I'll just go home tonight and shoot myself in the foot nine times. If only I hadn't lost sight of you. Detective, we don't have time for this. Have the police set up a perimeter right now. You don't have to worry about that, sir. I already got the boys working on that. But in doing that, I sorta... Ah. Uh, <laughs> What's wrong, detective? Sorry to butt in, but I'm afraid you're going to have to make do with me. Who is this? Shi Long Lang of Interpol. A pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Edgeworth. I've heard a great deal about you. So why exactly is an Interpol agent like yourself involved in a domestic kidnapping case? Don't sweat the details. A crime's a crime, whether it's a, on a local or global scale. Besides, you're the one who's in a world of trouble. And why would you say that? Lang Zi says, the pack that runs together stays together. You catch my drift? No, not really. You're being really cryptic. You caused quite a ruckus by running blindly into a situation and then getting caught. You should have con you should have contacted the police from the very beginning. I'm sorry that this happened because of a lapse in judgment. For I, Edgeworth, sometimes, maybe, once on all the planets, collided course, can make a mistake. However, I humbly request that you please accept- or you please help me out of here, post haste. Sorry, no can do. What? We're hunting the kidnapper now, and I haven't got any hands to spare. As I said, my pack moves as one. You're the one who wanted to go it alone, so good luck to you, Mr. Prosecutor. Oh, and once we catch the kidnapper, rest assured, we'll come find you. Eventually. You. You. Do you know who I am? What's wrong? Did you get cut off? No, my phone ran out of power. No way! Doesn't even matter anyway. We should try to get out of here through our own means. Yeah, I have a name to live up to after all. If we put our heads together, we can sure to find a way out. Well, more like I'll do everything I can do while you continuously assault the door. What's this? Looks like the Bad Badger, and it's looking as bad as ever. Looks like a costume head to me. I guess the Bad Badger's costume is, at, le at the very least, a two-piece, huh? The real question is why it'll only the head is sitting out here. Yay! I was hoping Edgeworth would put it on his head and be like, Yes, I am now the Badger. Just go insane. They're holding a they're holding a blue badger photo rally. You know, plus it's not just the blue badger, it's his whole family too. Oh great. Oh god, what is this atrocious piece of art? If you manage to take a snap to snap a shot of every member in the family, you get a really posh prize. I can't wait to get to the end of this case and the whole reason there was a kidnapping in the first place was so that they could get all the snapshots of the Badger costumes or something stupid like that. <laughs> well, there's a costume head sitting over there. Why not start with a picture of that? You can't do that. That's cheating. Says the thief. There's only one of each badger in the park, so you have to work for it. Speaking of badgers, there was one sitting against the wall in the haunted house. Seriously? But somehow I don't think that one counts, Mr. Edgeworth. You have to take pictures of the costume ones walking around the park. Hmm. So those are the rules of this game. How quaint. It was only a matter of time before Edgeworth used the word quaint in this game. Okay. Well, let's talk to Kay. Yo, what up, Kay? My his house dog. Um, of the 
street hood. Yeah, you should really just stop talking. You're not fitting in with me. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, here, my prosecutor's badge. Look, shiny. Right? Look how shiny it is, Kay. Hey, don't you think getting out of here is more important right now? You can ask me more about that later. Suppose she's right. Hey, don't you... Okay, yeah, yep, uh-huh. I'll just keep presenting everything I have to you. You know where the person who kidnapped me went? Well, after they locked you up in here, it sounded like they went into the next room and started talking to someone. I feel like I heard something as well, but it's all a haze in my mind. However, I do recall that the kidnapper was talking with someone. It was just a guess before, but I guess I really am dealing with two kidnappers here. After that, they just left. It almost seemed as if they were done with you. I suppose that is the case, as my kidnapping seems like an afterthought to the one million. Uh, well, if they went into the next room, let's see what we can find out through the slot. Okay, move away from the thank you. Thank you. You're the best assistant I could have ever asked. I'm not your assistant. Not yet, you aren't. I will have a cute little assistant of my own. Someday. Oh, can we can we peer into the room of the kidnappers we're in from here? I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. Yeah, you said that right over there to shut up. It's my catchphrase. Um, let's see. There's a door on the opposite side that appears to be the same as this one. Which would mean... The door on the opposite side is the same as this one. I mean, that I can probably assume that these two rooms are very similar in structure. <laughs> That's actually what I just said is a joke. I believe I may have just found our take it out. Is that what I think it is? It looks like the kidnappers had an escape tunnel uh, prepared just in case. That's awesome, they're like a bunch of great thieves themselves. No, they're not, because I highly doubt they made the tunnel themselves. The floor panel was removed and propped up against the beam in a very specific way. I think this building was originally built with a basement or underground area. Okay, well, um, looks like we're gonna have to start logicking everything together because we're out of things to look at. Costumes, open floor panel. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. Oh, we haven't looked over here yet. Man, why do they have to put the windows so high up anyway? How is a thief supposed to make her daring escape? I suppose we could make our way out of here if we were able to climb on top of these lockers. Aha, that's pretty clever. You make a good thief yet, Mr. Edgeworth. Please don't ever place my name and the word thief in the same sentence again. Let's see. I wonder if I can jump and grab the top of the locker here. This is rather pathetic. Man, why do they have to make such ginormous lockers anyway? You know, if we wanted to use these lockers, we need some sort of foothold. Yeah, that, that's basic logic here, Edgeworth. Lockers, costumes, open floor panel. None of that really connects in any way. Well, I am legitimately out of ideas with this. I must be missing something. So I thought I... Lo oh, there's a key here. I don't know how I didn't see that. What have we here? Ah! Why do I feel a laser-like stare aimed right at me? Did you want to take a look? Well, don't mind if I do. Ooh, I see. Yes, this is definitely... A key. I'm sure it's a key to something. No, I'm sure it's just hanging there for decoration. The something is what is relevant to my interest. Logic time. Lockers. Tiny key. Connect. Well, not exactly a shining example of perfect line of logic. I guess I will just punish myself mentally. Um... I'm just gonna guess tiny key and open floor panel. It's probably not gonna go anywhere since we can't actually access the floor panel. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I tried my hardest as an Edgeworth investigator. You okay? We're gonna talk again, okay? 
Well, I guess she wanted to see it, so I guess that was like a sign like, Hey, give, give her the damn key. Which, for some reason... Oh, because it's a logic thing. That's why. How do I miss something in here? It doesn't really make much sense. I can't... Is it... Oh, hold on. Oh, it's the beam that he was talking about. I didn't think that would be a separate object, but okay. There's a beam in the next room identical to the one in this room. There's even a hook on it to hold a, uh, a propped up floor panel in place. Which reminds me. Did you find something useful, Mr. Edgeworth? Perhaps. I may have found a very handy hint to how we'll get out of here. Um, did that actually get added to anything? Or is this just gonna... No? I feel like that's important, though. Oh, this is an... Oh, this is an object. Okay. I didn't think that was. I thought that was just part of the background. I guess that tiny little hook there, or whatever that is, is supposed to denote that. This beam I was tied to. Mm, what's up? Oh, is she gonna try and climb it? I was pondering if perhaps we could make it over to and climb out the window if we climb this. Good thinking. And if it's climbing action you need, just leave it to me. Thanks. This little hook looks like it might make for a good foothold. Up you go, Kay. Good luck. You count on it. Great Thief Yato- How are you doing that? That doesn't make- That doesn't- What? <laughs> oh, it's okay. You don't have to make it every time. As I thought, this beam was definitely not made for climbing. What do you mean, as I thought? I'm not your guinea pig, you know? <laughs> well, in my mind, everyone is. Did that actually get added to anything, or is she just gonna... Oh, okay, there we go, okay. So, um, beam I was tied to... Because there's... I'm just gonna guess that because in the next room there was a open floor panel tied to the beam. But I'm not sure if that... Oh, did I do it? Did I win? I won. I did it. I don't know what I did, though. This hook on this beam. You know, I already tried. There's just no way I can jump from the hook to the, to the hook to the window. Come on, even you have to admit something's just not possible. Huh. I wasn't about to suggest that again. Rather that it is difficult he that it's here for a different purpose. Difficult. Really? Like what? As you saw in the adjacent room, I'm deciding like what voice to give Kay. I have a very like limited repertoire of female voices that I can possibly give. Like, I have, like, the messed up Trucy voice. I have the further extent of the Trucy voice, which turns into the Nephi voice. I have the normal kind of girl voice, which I give to people like Titania. I have the one that I give to, um, like, the snotty one that I give to Emma. And then I have, like, the weird, almost, like, foreign one that I give to, like, um, I don't know, all the Borginian people. And same for, uh... I can't think of her name right now. But anyways, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out myself somehow. As you saw in the adjacent room, it's clearly for keeping a, a floor panel propped up. Which means that there should be a panel in this room that we can open as well. Oh, I get it. We didn't notice its existence all this time because it was being hidden by this tarp. Alright then, let's fold this thing up and see what's underneath. And it's... Now this is what I call a treasure. No, tiny key! No, the, no, we have to use the key on it. Well, this must be another entrance to a secret hidden basement. I totally smell treasure. The scent I wish to smell is the sweet fragrance of freedom. And tapioca pearl smoothies. Damn, those things are like crack. They should arrest me just for having those. Then what are you waiting for? Hurry up and open the hatch. Alright. Hmm? This thing is locked down tight. Ah, fiddlesticks! <laughs> well, if only we had a key, isn't that right, Kay? We have a key? God damn it. Okay, um... 
It's hard to stop talking like Edgeworth once I've started. <laughs> Key, underground entrance. Go. I believe you're up, Kay. Huh? Why me? Because we need to use the tiny key that you've taken quite a liking to. Oh, gotcha. Just leave it to me. I love the tense feeling of those moments when you're about to uncover something big. I believe the feeling of freedom would be much more satisfying right about now. All right, I got the secret door open, and now... Uh, wait! Ah! Are you all right? Not that I care, but are you all right, Kay? I'm fine. Ollie broke my femur. Good, I can use that as a weapon when I meet the murderer. The ladder just slipped and all, it's fine. Ah, uh, thank goodness she's all right. I about had a coronary. There's a lot of really large machinery down... Oh, that's, uh, like Kay talking. There's really a lot of ki uh, large machinery down here. What about an exit? <laughs> Over head just pops out like I'm still alive. Um, it's really dark and cramped down here, so I really doubt there's an exit. Whoop. <laughs> there's I love I I think the rest of the series should be done like this with um a mixture of like the up close sprites and the far away ones. They add so much character, but then again in the mainline games it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but for the investigation phases I feel like it would work out really well. Although, then again, all the mainline games after this were 3D models, so... It's, um... I don't think they're actually 3D models, but it was done in 3D. So, it, it's a little different in that case, but... I don't know, I feel like it could still be done. I can't believe what that happened! You have only yourself to blame before leaping before you looked, you know. No way, I mean, how was I supposed to know that the ladder is removable? Hmm, what could we do with a removable ladder? What do you think, Kay? I I, I don't know, Mr. Edgeworth. What uh wow well, just uh basic logic go. I figured out how we will escape this prison, Kay. Oh, so how are we going to bust out? Seems that your reckless actions were of use after all. Are you actually praising me? <laughs> More of a thank you for giving me an idea regarding this ladder. The underground ladder? What about it? This ladder isn't just for those who wish to go down. Ooh, I see. So if we use this... Yes, I believe it's long enough to reach the top of those lockers. Well, I mean, you can talk about your size all you want, Edgeworth, but how long is the ladder? Well, then we are... W well, then what are we waiting for? Investigation complete. And I guess I healed myself with a healing herb? You're gonna stop jumping. It's really getting on my nerves. All right, now we can get out of here. Yes, we spent entirely too much time in here. Kidnappers who held me hostage and a mysterious Interpol agent. This case is only getting started, and I'll be the one to bring it to a resounding end. March 13th, 2.11 p.m. Wild, wild west area. I feel like I was supposed to know one of those characters, but I don't. <laughs> it looks like it's stopped raining for now. Yeah, and thank goodness. You have no idea how hard it is to how hard it was raining earlier. Mr. Edgeworth! I'm so glad to see you managed to escape, sir. I was so stressed that I thought my heart was gonna give out. Detective Gumshoe, may I ask what in the world that is? Well, that's, um... What? M.I.B. Something Interpol? Master Investigation Battering Ram? I don't know. Men in Black. Oh, Men in Black. I feel like an idiot now. God damn it. <laughs> Men in black, what am I saying? But they're in blue, too. Oh, it works for both. Oh, no, it's supposed to just say man in black. It's supposed to be that guy individually. Okay, I get it now. 99. Shifu, all 99 members are here and accounted for, sir. Whoa. Hold on. We have badasses on the premise. Heh. <laughs> What the heck do you think you're doing counting my cubs off like that? 
Oh my god. Wait, that's not an eye patch. Those are sunglasses. You lied to me. You lied to me. <laughs> every person is a valuable human being, you get me? And every one has a name that their parents gave to them. And one is a two or a three. And regardless, every one of age or rank is number one, got it? Shifu! Shifu! I'm your biggest fan! Why does that one guy look like the... Why do those two guys not look like the rest of us? This is weird. You're Agent Lang, I take it. You infidel, how dare you address our Shifu so rudely? Ugh. Lang Zi says, A cub who disrespects others soon feels the disciplinary bite of an elder. So you don't ever forget to show the proper respect towards another person. She... She... Na? She... Na. That's the name of my dog. <laughs> this isn't much, but please accept my card. Oh, thank you. Please accept mine in return. You all see that just now? That's a proper way for two people to show their respect. I'll keep that in mind, and you'll keep that in mind, you'll get far in life. Got it? Oh, uh, that's right. Francisca did warn me. Something about an elite Interpol agent from the Republic of Zhang Fa. Apparently, this man has the highest successful rate in the organization. So, Borginia is like Europe, and Zhang Fa is supposed to be like China? I'm sorry if I'm being, like, highly ignorant right here, but that's what I've figured out so far, and here's a Maripan. Agent Lang, why exactly is an Interpol agent involved... I keep calling them Interpol, but they're Interpol, but Interpol sounds better in my opinion. Involved with this clearly domestic case. That's none of your business, Mr. Prosecutor. How is it not? I've heard a rumor or two about you. You solved a murder that occurred during your flight home recently, right? Ah, but you sure took a while just to arrest one little flight attendant. How pathetic. H how dare you say that about Mr. Etworth? Are you saying you could have solved it faster, pal? The, com the comedic of relief jumps in to aid his master. How cliche. Look, what I'm getting at is that if I had been there, no one would have died. I would have solved the entire case, and Agent Hicks would still be with us here today. Agent Lang knew yesterday's victim, Ag Agent Agby Hicks. Hicks was like a brother to me, so now I'm out to take my revenge. Agent Hicks was investigating a smuggling ring with Francisca and a third person. This must be the man she was talking about. In that case, you should understand how I feel, as, as the kidnapped is someone I know. So I ask that you please allow me to participate in the investigation. Not so fast, that's- I've never seen that one before. Well, I'm allowed to say not so fast in a speech bubble because I'm on a whole different level from you edgy. This isn't your neatly trimmed courtroom of Eden, you know. You're out in the wilderness now, Mr. Prosecutor, and way out of your league. No hard feelings, but why don't you go back to your courtroom now, pretty boy? You- you dare to mock the court? And my possible face? I do, and I don't need the help of a filthy prosecutor. Sorry, but the truth doesn't need the likes of you to distort it today. Who uses the adjective filthy to describe a prosecutor? Do you not see the cravat? I'm wearing three of them. Three of- cra Cravats are out of style for like nine years, dude. Come on, get with the program. I am going to kill this man. And why? Why do I feel such intense loathing emanating from him? Who's his assistant, though? Like, I like that look. <laughs> All right, men. Good job on the perimeter around Gatewater Land. Now find the kidnapper and bring the punk to me. Dismissed. Now then, Mr. Prosecutor, you just sit tight here and don't cause any trouble, understand? But wait! Well, then... Sir, I'm afraid to say this, but back where I'm from, you just got served, M Mr. Edgeworth. It's 
been a while since I last met someone so disagreeable. Why of all places did he show up here? And completely out of the blue with that. I suppose I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe to fill me in on that. Gumshoe, who's the douche? Not, not you, Mr. A Great job, Detective. Sir. For losing sight of me and the kidnapper allow- <laughs> For losing sight of me and the kidnapper and allowing my investigation to be hijacked. I- uh, Sir. I look forward to your next month's salary assessment. But- But the case isn't lost yet, sir. I'm gonna show you just how much of a man dick gumshoe can be. Shall I prepare the 21 gun salute now or later? <laughs> Detective, are you sure it was the pre the precinct you were called for? Precinct? Uh, you called for backup? Of course, sir. I think I would know the number to my own precinct, like back in the, like the back of my hand. Then why did an Interpol agent show up instead, with an army of his own agents? That I have no idea. About five minutes after I made the call, that wolf man showed up out of nowhere, sir. Agent Lang definitely has an agenda. So the question is, what is he after? Mr. Edgeworth, I was wondering if I may ask about one thing, sir. Yes, what is it? Um, who is that girl over there? I mean... I'm Mr. Edgeworth's assistant, Kay Farday. W what <laughs> Funny, I don't recall making you my assistant, Kay. Yeah, I'm Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Me, it's been like that since forever. Sorry, but I just stole your supporting role. How could you say something so serious with that giant grin on your face, pal? Mr. Treasurer, we've got a thief on our hands, sir. She stole my role. I'm taking her in, getting her convicted. I'm gonna make sure she serves out her sentence. Oh, come on, it'll be fun, like musical chairs. You better stay fast on your feet, or I'll steal your goddamn life. No way. I won't. I will not lose the spotlight to you, little girl. <laughs> Okay, well, that was fun. Okay, what do you have to say? Man, I don't- I can't calmly do any stealing with all that detective- with- wait. With all that detective around. Is that a type or is that just the way the K talks? Because she's always- She has kind of a slang to how she talks and makes up words, like I do. But, uh, is that- I bet that key in her hair is some huge crucial plot thing. I really like her design, though. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, and she has quite the personality, so let's see how she matches up to Trucy and Mia. Or, sorry, not Mia, Maya. Mia's dead. Dead, quote-unquote dead. By the way, I never brought this up in the other games, but my one of my least favorite characters in the Ace Attorney series is actually Mia. And people go, why is that? And that's because she's someone you're supposed to care about in the first game, and then she died, and they keep bringing her back again and again and again and again, but the problem is she died too early for it to have a mega, like a major effect on you. But then they discern that apparently in the third game and tell you all the things behind it. But that's kind of a really long time to have that character's backstory be revealed to you. Which I don't remember all of it either. I remember you do a thing as her, I think. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I've just never really liked her character that much. Man, I can't calmly do any stealing with all that detective around. <laughs> suppose it's not easy when there's this many members of law enforcement in the vicinity. It's alright. It's not like I'm in a hurry to steal just old any old thing. Which is, which is it? Do you plan on stealing something or not? Quite the mystery, this one. Maybe I should talk with her a bit more. Next step. So what are you going to do about your investigation into the kidnapping? Good question. Since Agent Lang holds the authority to investigate this case now. This makes things a bit more complicated. Oh, come on, you can't let that stop you. I'll even lend a hand. Let's go. But you're a self-purported uh, self great thief, are you not? I don't believe I can let someone of an unlawful nature participate in the investigation. You can only be chaotic neutral if you're going to be on the Edgeworth Force. You don't like to listen, do you? Don't worry, I'm not just any ordinary great thief. I'm the Yatagrasu. And as I said earlier, the Adigrasu is after one and only one thing. 
her mouth is gigantic. Like, how wide she opens her mouth to speak. I think it really does add to her character a bit, though, in her design. What is this one and only one thing? Wait, one and only one thing you're after? The Yadagrasu is only interested in one thing. And that is the truth. I, you're, you're gonna steal the truth. Um, that's, uh, corny as shit. It was seven years ago. There was a vigilante who threw the business world into panic. Labeled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yatagrasu appeared and vanished at will. Though we still don't know much about the thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. The Yatagrasu like to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. Once a target was chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement was sent forth. Instead, the chosen cooperation was infiltrated without even the target noticing. Some days later, the evidence was found was found what was found was sent out to the mass media, along with a card with the mark of the three-legged raven. Looking back, I suppose you could call what the Yatagrasu was stealing the truth. Could this child really be the successor to the original Yatagrasu? But that can't be, can it? Lance, Lance, where are you, son? Who? Oh god, what are you? Oh, it's Mr. Amano. Um, Mr. Amano. Oh, Miles, my boy. I'm sorry to involve you in such an affair just after you've returned. For you, Mr. Amano, I gladly offer my assistance. After all, I have you to thank for how well things turned out during my time abroad. If it wasn't for you, I might not have been introduced to the law office and had the chance to study the inner workings of another country's judicial system. Okay, okay, I get it. Stop sucking up, little bitch worth. No, 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 think nothing of it. As you know, Manfred and I go way back. I consider, a uh, I consider a beloved disciple of his to be like one of my own blood. If you ever want to go overseas again, you need only to ask. I could use my company's vast network to send you anywhere at any time. So who's the old man? He's the father of the currently kidnapped Lance Amano, Ernest Amano. Now then, have you found out about Lance yet, Miles? Please, I miss my poor boy dearly. He's just counting money. What's with this dude? I'm terribly sorry, but your son's whereabouts remain un unknown, Mr. Amano. What? Well, hold on there. Then what happened to all that money? I believe the one million has been stolen and that the culprits are now on the run. What? <laughs> he seems to be so, like, the money seems to interest him more than his own children, so that's an interesting characteristic. Poor old man. Don't you have anything you could... <laughs> don't you have anything you could give him to cheer him up, Mr. Edgeworth? Forgive me, Mr. Amano. Do I? Not really. I don't really have much to give him. I was wondering if you could please tell me the details of the kidnapping one more time. Oh, it was yesterday. A call came to my house. From the receiver came the sound of my son. Help me, Daddy. Sniff. I know this is tough, but please stay with me here, Mr. Amano. You don't understand. He hasn't called me Daddy in ages. It was incredibly moving. I wish I had recorded him saying that. He definitely should have recorded that conversation. <laughs> but not for the foolish sentiments of an old man. Whoops, I didn't mean to- No! There we go. Refresh my memory, what kind of person is Lance again? How will telling you about Lance help you get him back? Surprisingly, a lot can be deduced from a person's relationships and or behavior. Very well then, Lance is my one and only son and he turned 21 this year. He is very much like me when I was his age, kind and very attractive. <laughs> I'm sure women simply can't keep their hands off him. Is there anything else about him you noticed as of late? Now that you mention it, I haven't been able to get in contact with our butler, Oliver. Or your butler. Yes, his name was Oliver Deacon. He's been with our family for years now. He gets along so well with Lance, so I thought maybe he would know where my son is. 
Oh yes, it's always the butler. The butler is always the killer. Mr. Amano, could you please tell me a little bit more about your butler, Mr. Deacon? As a butler, he's outstanding. He even serves as Lance's personal private tutor. He took a brief leave recently, but even after it was over, I haven't been able to reach him. So you still haven't spoken with him since his leave. What about his family and friends? They said they hadn't been s they hadn't seen him. I've tried everything I could think of, Miles. Do you think this could have something to do with Lance's kidnapping? It's possible, but I can't say anything for qu sure quite yet. So even the person closest to the victim has gone missing. Oliver Deacon sounds like one name I had better keep in mind. Detective Gumchu. Yes, sir. Let's begin our investigation. Oh yeah, the investigation music. Even if the Interpol agent holds authority to head this investigation. We can't allow ourselves to stand idly by twiddling our thumbs. I agree with you 100%, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. I, Dick Gumchu, pledge to stick by your side through thick and thin. Mr. Amano, it was my fault that the culprits escaped. Which is why, with your blessing, I vow to return Lance to you myself. Oh, I've never seen you so passionate before, Miles. Good luck to you, my boy. Alright, well, what are you waiting for? Let's do some investigating. If you think I'm losing you, pal, forget it. Okay, come on, both of my assistants. So what should we examine first? Hmm. Thanks to Agent Lang, we can't leave this area. But the culprits were here until only very recently. Which means we may be able to find some clues that will tell us how they escaped. Okay, let's get looking. Hey, you there. Who, me? <laughs> what are you doing goofing off in a place like this? I wasn't goofing off, I was about to help Mr. Edgeworth kick off his investigation. You know, his video game. You imbecile. All precinct detectives are now under Agent Lang's direct command. N no way. I am not working for Wolf Boy. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do something? I'm not exactly in a position to argue, seeing as how you are a member of the police. <laughs> Good, now let's go. No! <laughs> Boy, have I just... Got, boy, have I got just the job for you, or something he said. I didn't read it. Well, that was exciting. Just quite- I don't imagine her having quite, like, a high trucy voice. That's what I've been kind of giving her. Okay. What? Can't you tell I'm all ready to go down to some detective work? Or ready to get down to some detective work? You should go home. Your parents must be worried about you. Oh, this is the part where she reveals that she's an orphan. Oh, come on. I finally get to be your assistant, and you try and ditch me? Don't recall offering you the position. Hmm, why do you have to be so difficult? Besides, it's already too late, you know. Like I said, I've already stolen the position of assistant a while back. Huh, you're the only one who's asserting that. Well, by the time anyone notices, it's already gone. That's the Yatagarasu way. You shouldn't speak so lightly of things you know nothing about. Fine, whatever, you win. Go ahead and do your little investigation. But the talented Assistant K is going to tag along no matter what you say. Even if she turns out to be useless, she's not going to listen- Oh, yeah, that's Edward talking. I guess we'll just continue their voice. She's not going to listen to me. I might as well surrender and let her come along for the ride. I always- it really made me wonder what kind of Assistant Edgeworth could possibly have and like, how they could invade into his life like this, but now I truly see it. You know, it seems like almost ev- No, that's not true. Every single assistant in the game is practically forced upon the character. I think that's hilarious now that I look at it at the way it actually is, but, um... Yeah. I got you now, vile criminals. I think the kidnappers would have a better sense than you to try hiding in these. Oh, come on, lighten up, will ya? I was only joking. I don't really think that the criminals would be hiding here right in front of two officers. I, I certainly hope not. <laughs> hey, Mr. Edgeworth, isn't this one of those things you tie horses to? Yes, yeah, so of the horses are in another location at the moment. Oh, I'm here. I was hoping I could get to ride one. Do you know how to ride a horse? Nope, never rode one in my life. But I have an Asian friend who was born in the year of the horse. God damn it, this girl. Non sequitur is the only logic to describe your case. 
barrels? I guess let's investigate everything. These are real. I wonder you put in them. Water would be ob would be the obvious answer. But if you stored water in a barrel under the blazing sun, wouldn't it go bad? People of that period probably didn't care how it tasted. Sorry, but I can't let you get away with making fun of our forefathers. I mean, maybe they really like the strange taste. Look who's making fun of them now. Look, there's a blurb about the cactus here. A blurb? What the hell is a blurb? This cactus is a very gri- Oh, okay, it's like a little, um, plate that just says, Whatever, whatever, this thing's super special. Tourists, now go buy drinks. This cactus is a very gracious gift to Gatewater Land from the local police precinct. I can't believe the police went so far as to even donate a cactus to this place. So is the police department running a cactus farm on the side? Ha, <laughs> just kidding, they wouldn't do something so silly. Actually, I have the vague impression I've seen a cactus farm at the precinct before. <laughs> Yeah, as, as, take it from someone who lives in the desert. Um, cactus, or cacti, as plural, are not fun. People think they are fun, but they are not. They suck and can take up entire patches of land, and can halt your progress if you are hiking. And if you fall, God have mercy on you. Anyways. Excuse me, but you could just let me through here. Sorry, I can't let anyone through. Agent Lang's orders. Uh, supposed to have to deal with this impasse for now. Is, are you a lot? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. No, no, no. I want out. I want out. I quit. I quit. Let's go play Dead Space right now. That sounds great, right? Hey, it's the Blue Badger. <laughs> what do you do? Are you gonna feed him? You know, like a bird? What's your end goal here? Okay. Badger, get! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay, goddammit. She's adorable. I don't really understand why she's so excited over this badger hunt. Speaking of badgers, there's a person inside of there. Mr. Badger, I wonder if you might share with me what you saw. He's doing that contorted, wriggling dance again. Aha! Oh my god, it's you. Oh, you uncovered my undercover identity, sir. I was to remain under that head, sir. Aren't you the off? Aren't you Officer Meekins, sir? Mike Meekins reporting for duty, sir. This man was a witness in one of the cases I had two years ago, and even in, and even in Apollo Justice, he was. The only thing I remember about this officer is that he often spoke and acted before he thought, which gave me a great deal of headaches. Is he a friend of yours, Mr. Edgeworth? I've met him in the courtroom once before. Hmm, why was he so upset when he un when we unmasked him? Does he have something to hide? Officer Meekins, why are you standing here wasting time? Sir! Because I'm not a police officer right now, sir. I'm a blue badger. I'm creating memories and dreams for the kids. That's never a waste of time, sir. I have a dream to become as big as Detective Gumshoe. Wow, that's a... That's a small dream. I was patrolling the scorchingly boring B until a while ago. When the dispatch radio on my shoulder crackled that the kidnappers had escaped, sir. I thought that maybe this was my shot at making Detective, sure, sir. I rushed over to join in, but when I got there, there was a sea of people already. I couldn't spread my trademark friendliness and joy onto anyone. It would seem that some people never change. So why exactly are you in that ridiculous outfit? Sir! That's because, sir. I'm here to keep the visitors in good spirits, sir. It's also to hide the fact that I'm an officer on the trail of a kidnapper, sir. I see Agent Lang is very wise to employ this sort of diversionary tactics. To be handed the role of the Blue Badger of, out of all different disguises, sir. It's... it's such an honor! Okay, then. Any clues? How long have you been standing here, officer? Sir! For about one little hour, sir. Hmm. That's around the time I woke up from being knocked unconscious. And I've been here ever since, sir. 
If that's true, then it's possible Officer Meekin saw the kidnappers escaping. But 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 however, sir! I must tell you I didn't see a thing, sir! I haven't asked you anything yet, officer. No 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 no, but I know you will, sir. He's hiding something from me. Officer Meekins, I insist that you tell me more about your recent movements. Sir, I've been playing the blue badger this whole time, sir. And getting into it, too. I patrolled the park all while wearing this costume. And about one hour ago, I came over here, sir. And about... Okay. I haven't seen any suspicious-looking people this whole time. But I did see a badger, sir. A lone blue badger. What you said just now is contradictory to the facts. How so, Mr. Edgeworth? This is what Officer Me Meekin's testimony contradicts. A lone blue badger? I don't see what the problem is here. I actually have to look at the evidence to figure this one out. Shit, I didn't mean to... No, I was trying to check it out. <laughs> I pushed the wrong button, my bad. I'm just a little patrol man, so I don't understand what you're talking about, sir. I can't say I get it either. Ah. This is it. Uh, no. uh, Edgeworth, you're not making any. Uh. <laughs> of course, sir, I'd be honored to repeat myself as many times as needed, sir. Yeah, you didn't see anyone, sure. Whatever you say. Okay, so now this time I will just use the touch screen and do this instead of using the, um,. Can, uh, the buttons to do it because that is throwing me off really badly. There's only one of each badger in the park. And he's a regular badger, that's why. That. Officer Meekins, let's get let's back things up. I'd like to ask you about your last statement. Sir, of course, sir. If that is your wish, Mr. Prosecutor. This little patrolman will wait as long as I am commanded to wait. You said that you saw a blue badger, correct? And yet, if you take a look at this, what you saw was not supposed to happen. The park is supposed to have only one of each badger in it at any given time. Which means that as long as you are the blue badger, Officer Meekins, you should not have seen another blue badger wandering the premise. What? <laughs> wow, he squeezed his face so hard his hat came off. Then that would mean that there are two blue badgers walking around, but why? Oh god, I keep forgetting the whole logic system. I've been, like, looking around here forever, like, Oh, what do I do? What what was going on? I just realized logic. And I got it. Confirmed. Fire Emblem stole the face cut from Ace Attorney, by the way. Just saying. A second blue badger that shouldn't exist. Clearly the true identity of the person underneath is... Oh, I know, it's one of the kidnappers, right? The person wore a costume to get away. Precisely. After all the costumes that went missing from storage area are... A blue badger, a proto-badger, and a bad badger. <laughs> yes, those three. So are there three phony badgers running around in the park somewhere, huh? Stolen costumes data, jotted down in my organizer. Well then. Dumb. That didn't really solve anything. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up, but as far as what we're supposed to be doing... Uh, I have no idea. Can I examine the pipe? Hey, there's a bunch of footprints in the mud over here. I remember hearing rain fall out here while I was being held in there. Yep, it was just a passing rain. That's why the ground is pretty much dried up. I should be thankful. It left us with some nice footprint samples. You know what? I bet if we followed them, we could find out where the kidnappers went. Plus, I'd be able to spot them because of their muddy shoes. I don't think it will be that easy. Why not? Look carefully. There are quite a few different sets here. Really? They look almost all the same to me. Well, yeah, I guess there's like the people shoes from the police walking around and the giant badger prints. <laughs> and we don't know which ones belong to the kidnappers. Well, that's true. Don't we know... 
We don't know of any kind of shoes that they were wearing. <clears throat> Wouldn't they just be wearing badger shoes, which we could... Can, can I not connect these? I mean, I have a feeling it seems like a lapse of logic is about to happen, but... Oh, nope, I got it. I'm smart. I am the greatest. No, now... Now that we know that the kidnappers were wearing badger costumes... Those footprints from earlier take on a new and very significant meaning. Oh, and you mean how now we know which tracks belong to the kidnappers, right? Yes. More than shoe prints, we need to follow the paw prints of the badgers. Okay, Mr. Edgeworth, it's time to use the footprints and go badger hunting. Go use the footprints. But we can't leave. Hmm, so we're looking for footprints made by the costume. Hey, I think I found them. There are two sets here. They both... They... What? They don't both look like possible candidates. Oh, wow. She has, like, a looking animation. This set is walking off to the west. Alright, it just stops. I can't make heads or tails of where this is headed from here. I think we can assume it's headed towards the stadium. Hmm, I wonder where the other set leads. This one seems to be headed east. I, I, are, are you, you're just gonna cut me off the camera. <laughs> huh? Quick, Mr. Edgeworth, I've got him. I got one of the culprits. Ah, uh, no, I'm not the kidnapper, sir. Is she punching him? Down, Kay. Clearly those footprints belong to Officer Meekins. Our criminals were each wearing a costume. Aha, uh -huh, maybe they came over to this garage or something. That's what I thought I would suppose. Or what? What? That that wasn't a real sentence, Zeno. What the hell are you doing with my voice? That's what I would suppose, Officer Meekins, if you could step aside for a moment. We need to examine the garage. Sir. Roger Wilco, sir. Oh, what is this? Let's open the shutter and see what we find. Maybe we'll find the kidnappers hiding inside. What, what, was that really worth screaming? Okay, yeah, it's dead body, you can scream. What, what in the... We seem to have stumbled across a dead body. She must be in severe shock to have, to have been the first to find it. Now then, who is this man? It's Oliver! Mr. Romano, are you saying that this man is... Yes, he's my butler. How could something like this have happened? Indeed, and why was Mr. Deacon here to begin with? Better investigate this crime scene quickly before Agent Lang or his men return. The kidnapper's footprints lead right into this garage and right to a dead body. It is possible one of the kidnappers is now a murder victim. From my cursory examination, I believe this man died of a fatal bullet wound. Okay, I see where this is going. You sure are calm for someone who just found a dead body. It's surprising what one can become accustomed to in the span of two days. Won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. Will you stop saying- No, I won't. God, leave me alone. Okay, the necklace. That stands out. This is an unusually shaped pendant. Really? Horses are that unusual? I wouldn't think so. What is it? Is it something valuable? She seems to have regained some of her composure. It looks like a horse pendant. It's got an antique feel about it and is really pretty. Hold on, this one's made of platinum silver. Nice, it is worth something after all. Oh look, there's something written on the back. Colin Devoray. It's his name. Colin Devoray? But this man's name is... What is his name? I already forgot. It's Oliver something. Oliver Deacon. Colin. Oh, it it's um, it's an anagram with his name. Okay, yeah. So the necklace's name is an anagram using his name. So it's obviously a fake one. But uh, let's see what else? Look at this bullet wound. As long as that Interpol agent has control of this case. 
I'm not going to be able to have a real autopsy done on the victim. I'm no doctor, but let's see what I can piece together myself. And there are two gunshot wounds, one in his abdomen and one in his shoulder. So that means he was shot twice? No, I don't think so. I think the abdominal one is an entry wound, and the one near his shoulder is the exit wound. Nice, I knew you could figure it out. It comes with experience, and I've seen my share of crime scenes. Speaking of experience, this crime scene seems a bit too clean for a murder where the bullet went clean through. I should make a note of this oddity. Yeah, you're right, there's no puddle of blood or anything. Which probably means he died elsewhere. Preliminary findings data updated my organizer. I'm guessing he was carried off or killed somewhere else in his car and then carried off here and dumped. The only thing I can think of is that it has something to do with that necklace. I feel like we have to do something. I feel like what it is is that it says that it was shot in his abdomen and came out his left or right shoulder. I can't remember what it said. Oh, we can look here. Good. Uh, pending autopsy, cause of death, preliminary findings. So I went through his lower abdomen and his right shoulder. The only thing I see that's off is it doesn't look like his necklace is connected. It looks like it's broken on the left side, though, which is kind of weird. What? 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 I don't understand. Okay, what, 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 Edgeworth? Just explain it to me. I don't... Okay, whatever. There's something not right about the name on the pendant. The fact that it's an anagram. Oh, that's what we're connecting? Isn't that obvious? Is that he... It's not as... Okay. Alright, I guess I'm overthinking things. I thought this was an obvious fact that everyone knew. The victim is the Amano family butler and his name is Oliver Deacon. But the name on the pendant is Colin Devere. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's an anagram. O-L-I-V-E-R-D-E-A-C-O-N- Yeah, okay. I wonder what's up with that. I don't know, but... I think we've hit upon an important piece of information. We did it! We're so good! Lance! Lance! Where are you, sweetie? Who sang that? Oh, sweet little, uh, bar girl lady. Excuse me, and you are? Oh my god, she is- is she- Does she have a ring pop? The hell? Um, she's like beyond belief. Okay, whatever. Oh, this is bad. He's really good looking. Ah, stop it, Lauren. You can't let yourself fall for a playboy like him. You're in love with- Sounds like someone doesn't know the meaning of phrase inner monologue, huh? Sorry to interrupt your conversation, but might you be a friend of Lance? Yes, I'm uh, Lance's girlfriend. Name's Lauren- wait, what? What? Huh? Him? Oh wait, no. Lance. Lance Amano. <laughs> I, I got these two uh, confused for a second. I'm like, Jesus, that's um... That's a bit of a stretch. My name is Lauren Pops. Oh, I get it. Lauren Pops and she's licking a ring pop. Okay. Makes sense. <sighs> His girlfriend. Oh, it's not like that. We're more friends and um, we're not lovers or anything. Well, we, we, we just haven't got along well. But I guess that's how people are going to see it. So I should just accept it. I even got this ring as a present from Lance, swoon. Haha, <laughs> you know what she kind of reminds me of? A cartoon character. Yeah, her art style almost seems different from the rest of the game. Which is... Unsettling in my book, at least. I don't like when that happens. <laughs> uh. May I inquire as to why you are here? I haven't been able to get in contact with Lance lately. And I begin to get really worried, Sob. I looked everywhere for him, and then I heard about the kidnapping, so I came here. Wow, you're really strong for having made it through all this by yourself. I'm um, as true as Lance really been kidnapped. 
No one is supposed to know, but yes, it's true. Oh, Lance. I can't believe you've been spirited away. I wonder how you're doing right now. Looks like she's gone back to the fair maiden in love routine. Wait, where'd, where'd she go? Are we just going to... Okay, she's gone. So, so, Miss Redworth, where do we go from here? Well, we found a body, so we should look into the murder. My men brought me up to speed over the radio. I have to say, you really should have called. I heard you found something very intriguing. But nothing to hide, Agent Lang. It's exactly what you see before you. I'll take it from here. Yeah, that guy's really dead. <laughs> hey, you waiting for an invitation? Hurry up and detain the suspect now. Suspect who? <laughs> Officer Meekins, is it? You're coming with us. What, sir? I had nothing to do with it, sir. Agent Lang, don't you think you're being a bit rash? Do you even have a good reason to suspect Officer Meekins? Ha, huh, I leave that kind of stuff to you prosecutors. It's your job, after all. Wow, okay. Like I said earlier, the crime scene isn't as forgiving as your precious courtroom. That's your answer? I know you'd like your logic and reasoning, but that sort of impractical fluff is not needed out here in the field. Really? Basic logic is fluff? All you have to do is arrest a suspicious person after a suspicious person. That's how you eliminate crime from the streets. But that's also precisely how you unnecessarily arrest innocent people by mistake. Innocent people nonsense. There's no such thing as an innocent person. We've all got a blemish or two in our hearts. That's tyranny. I won't allow such a thing to go unchecked before my eyes. Huh. Too bad you don't call the shots around here. As I am sworn to uphold the laws of the land, I cannot allow you to take this man in. That you would arrest a man on false charges without even conducting an investigation. Have you no honor as a member of law enforcement? How dare you speak to, to, so disrespectfully to our Shifu? Hold it. <laughs> you amuse me, Mr. Prosecutor. Lang Zi says every pack has its own rules. If you can play by their rules and come out on top, that is a true victory. Alright, I'll give your beloved laws a fair shake. I'll show you just how much investigating I've done. Through my line of logic. Okay, well, I'm gonna end the episode here. I know we're probably just, like, seconds away from being done. But, uh, I really like the antagonist of this, and I think he's probably going to be the main antagonist throughout the last three chapters of this. So if you guys are enjoying the series, please leave a like, it helps out a lot. And I hope you guys are enjoying it, like, seriously, because I'm having a ton of fun. It may not be as goofy all the time as other Ace Attorney games, but certainly does have its own special little feel to it with all the sprites moving around, and I think it has a good chance to be its own unique thing, not that it doesn't already have a sequel already. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a wonderful day. Riding out.